Good job, homers. Go on, Gab. Gab, Gab. You hear the puppies? You want a belly rub? Let me see the belly. Let me see. Oh, there it is. There it is. Hi, Eris. Good job, Homer. Get, 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 get. Good morning again. We just arrived back at the house. We've been here for about 20 minutes. They had their second round of puppy vaccines. <clears throat> we had some great meet and greets. Um, Shelly and I did a home check. We have another home check today. So we should have some really great news. If all goes well, all the puppies will be adopted. Let's keep our fingers crossed for good, 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 happy stuff between today and tomorrow. It's a lot of work, guys. Don't think, oh, puppies are so easy. Oh, no, 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 they're not. These happen to be really great puppies, but you're talking you know, last night with, oh, we had such thunderstorms, and Shelly said, and Keith, the walls were shaking, they were crying, all the babies were terrified, so juggling, going from room to room to keep everybody feeling comfortable, and it was just a rough night. I know me being home with my babies, they were on my head shaking, so you're talking about a whole <clears throat> house full of terrified babies, and I think, how do they survive like Ruthie and um, Vaughn that were living on the streets. How do they survive outside in these terrible storms alone? And of course, you're talking about three feedings a day and cleaning, you know, cleaning up. They're pretty good. They're really good. They're pretty much potty trained, thanks to Nana, Christine, and Bob. Nana is going through a lot right now with her ankle, so everybody keep those prayers coming. Uh, lots of tests done before she can have surgery. Nana, we're thinking of you and love you. Good morning, Janice. It is a beautiful Friday morning. And again, this is little Geb over here. And then we have Eris is the short-haired one. These two are always together, always together. And then we have Homer. Hi, Homer. Oh, Homer, Homer. They're very intrigued with the stairs and the table and the ramps. Sometimes they go down the ramp. Sometimes they just hop right off the table. Good job, Geb. And then that's Aries. And then Geb has the ball. Geb's very busy with his ball. It's bigger than his head. <laughs> it's just so cute. I thought I would jump on. Who's going to go swimming first today? It's getting hot. Guys, while I have you all here, um, it's Friday morning. It is, I don't know what time, a little after 9 or 10, 10-ish. And we have quite a busy day today. I wanted to update all of you. Um, we did have an appointment yesterday with um, Ruthie, a.k.a. Lucy, that we rescued from the Miami-Dade Kill Shelter with the mammary tumors. She was seen by Dr. Babevsky. She had to have a light sedation. They trimmed her nails. They cleaned her ears. They did radiographs to prepare for surgery, to spay her and remove her mammaries. Um, everything looked clear. And so we will set up a date for surgery. That's for Ruthie. And then we have um, Vaughn, who's doing wonderful, wonderful. He's such a good boy, right, Shell? Such a good boy, Vaughn. He's starting to come around and accept love and wanting love. And then I wanted to update all of you because I've been receiving so many calls um, about the dogs that were locked in the hot boxes. 
you know, I don't want to put too much out there. We're not dealing with a healthy mind on the other end. So we have to obviously be very careful um, on our end. So just because we're quiet, please don't think we're not doing anything. Please use your brain and think, wow, they're, they're doing things behind the scenes. Um, we don't stop and, and just forget. We are on top of it. Um, the last update that I received from Animal Control was that they were out there twice. He was not answering the door. Uh, we were told that the boxes were going to be completely broken down and removed. That's when we were on scene. We heard the officer, Animal Control officer, speaking. Well, according to Philip, the supervisor from Animal Control, he is stating that they cannot make him remove the boxes, um, that they are not allowed to be in the boxes. Fans have been placed under the overhang for coolant. Uh, that's what we got in the oh, oh, in the email. What's the matter, Holmes? You got scared? It's okay. It's okay. There you go. Is that betters? That's better. Dear, now we're all better. Um, so the dogs in the boxes, well, like I said, they said the dogs were not in the boxes when they went out. The dogs were not on tethers when they went out. Um, and all I can tell you is that's all I've got for you. The two beautiful babies that we rescued when we went on the cruelty case, not expecting or having any room to take for Mindy and Gage, two dogs with the tick infestation. I received an update. You have to remember, we don't have the liberty to go in and out of the hospital during COVID. So it's basically just receiving phone calls, updates, little photos from the doctors, which were basically bowl, look at this, bowls full and full of ticks. So they have removed the ticks. They're still falling off. Um, and they had to do a blood transfusion on the female Mindy. Um, she's doing very well holding her numbers for the blood transfusion. Gage is doing very well. They're eating and drinking and the ticks are still falling off. So they're doing wonderful. Uh, we, as soon as we have an open room over at house one, then Mindy and Gage will be released from the animal hospital. They will come to us. I can't wait to get them into our hands and love on them. Yes, Mindy and Gage. I think it's G-A-U-G-E, it's a different spelling uh, for Gage. They're brother and sister, they're about two years of age, and they will be coming to us as soon as we have a room available, and there we have another bonded pair. So please, 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 we need to get these babies adopted. Puppies are easy um, as far as finding homes. It's just a lot of work. I can't tell you, probably 400 plus emails per puppy, applications, phone calls, screening, hours on the phone of interviews, then when it's a good candidate, then we'll set up a meet and greet, um, and then we do home checks to ensure it's the best home for them. So there's a lot, a lot of work that goes into adopting, even if it's a tiny little puppy. Trust me when I tell you. And we didn't want the puppies to go to a home where they were going to be alone. They're young, as you can see, they're very social, they're very playful, they need a friend. So we had a lot of people wanting the puppies and they had no other dogs. They said, but we'll give them love. We want them to have a friend. If we have the pick of the crop, why not take our time and find them the best homes? It's their life. They can't speak, we're their voice, and we're gonna do the best for them. So any, any, any and all of these puppies that have been adopted are going to be adopted, are going to be in a home with another small dog compatible to play with so they can grow up with a sibling or adopted hopefully together with one of their siblings so that was our goal and we're sticking to it we're sticking to it i know zoe did a late night video last night of colin how wonderful how perfect he is there's no reason he should be in a room we need to find that sweet young boy perfection a home colin um Lola and Cookie, the bonded pair, I do not understand. I really don't. They are 100% love. They are perfection in every way. There is no reason they need to be sitting in a room. They could be in a home or a foster. They're perfect. And anybody that gets Cookie and Lola, my God, I'm so jealous of you because they are two of our favorite dogs. 
everybody's obsessed in love with Cookie and Lola. So please, if you could consider opening your home, if you're not ready to adopt even in your local, consider opening your home to foster. Foster. It opens up a room for us. And that way we can save another life. If we had a room, we would be able to take, you know, Gage and, Gage and Mindy, excuse me. Gage and Mindy would have been able to come to the rescue house by now once the ticks were gone. So now we're waiting until we have an open room. It just makes it very, very challenging and very stressful on our team. <laughs> these, these guys are ridiculous. Tanner, Tanner, so yes, Tanner the white poodle that the owner gave up um, went to Zoe's brother. It was not a fit. And then we had a very dear friend of ours, Alyssa. I love you, Alyssa. Um, she is the manager of Channel 4 News. She had reached out to me around the same time that Zoe said her brother was taking Tanner the Poodle. And when we figured it didn't work out, Zoe went and picked Tanner up and brought Tanner to Alyssa's house. And let me tell you, oh my God, you want to talk about perfection and the perfect home? Tanner is living the dream and she works from home. Um, her fiance is a police officer, so he's around a lot because he works overnight shifts. They have another little dog and Tanner is spoiled as spoiled can be. So Tanner is home and adopted. Sam and Susie, they need to be the only pet. They need the right home. We have Red, we have Albert, we have Tootie, Colin next door, and then over here at house two, we have Vaughn, we have Wolfie, we have Binky, we have Ruthie, and then we have Bubbly and Foster, and we have Felix and Oscar and Foster. Just because you don't see the dogs at the rescue house, Wilbur's wonderful. Wilbur's not phased at all by the storm. He was burrowed under his blanket. Not a peep out of him. He was con completely content. And baby Eric. Eric desperately. Puppy Eric, the dumpster puppy. He's doing wonderful. He desperately needs a forever home. So he is urgent to find a loving home. So remember little Eric. The dumpster puppy. Yes, Red, I already stated Red needs a home. Tootie's having her surgery, I believe, next week. So, everybody, just keep those prayers coming. Felix and Oscar are ridiculous. They are ridiculous. All the dogs I have updated on, maybe you have just jumped on a little bit late. So when I shut down, you'll have to go back and watch from the beginning and you'll hear all the updates. These dogs need homes, desperately, desperately. No, Eric cannot be with these puppies. Eric needs to be vaccinated and microchipped, which was setting up an appointment. Good morning, Mississippi. Sadly, the kitten passed away. Gable is with Zoe, and he's doing fantastic. We'll update more on Gable uh, tomorrow evening. I will be doing a live video to update more on Gable, and then um, I have another surprise for you tomorrow evening at the same time. Ariel is doing fantastic. It's amazing you just asked that because I just got a text from her mommy. Um, they set up an appointment for her to be rechecked. Um, she's going to need to be spayed. You got to leave, Homer? You have a leave? And um, I'm going to reach out to her and just check in. But Ariel's been doing phenomenal. Phenomenal. Look at you guys. So guys, all the questions that you're now throwing at me. Good morning, California. Um, all the questions that you... Sparrow's doing phenomenal too. Yes, Tudy needs another surgery. She needs her... Um, both anals removed, the sacs, and then her um, 
tail has to be removed. So she has a big surgery coming. The poor girl has been through so much, not to mention when I say we need to be prepared with financials um, because we never know what we're going to be going through. And here you have it. She's going in for a big, big surgery, very costly surgery. The fire hydrant was actually donated by our adopter, Jim, who adopted our Linus. If you remember the little Shih Tzu that was at Miami Dade and he had the obstruction in his throat, another one. Um, his daddy stopped by and donated the hydrant. No, I am not sick, I'm just tired. <laughs> I'm just extremely tired. And if I'm tired, can you imagine how Shelly feels? Because Shelly is here doing all this work with all the babies. It's a full-time job. Shelly, what time did you get up this morning? Or what time did you go to bed, I should say? I fell asleep at 3. Fell asleep at 3 and was up at 5. Two hours sleep. Two hours sleep for Shelly. Not enough coffee in the morning to get you going, trust me. When these babies are in need and, you know, they're crying out because of storms and thunder and lightning, you're there. You know, you're, you're comforting them. It's a lot. You're talking about a full house of dogs and they're all wanting your, your hands and your arms and, and they all want to be comforted. So it's a lot. Normally, yes, we do need volunteers, but due to COVID, we are not accepting any new volunteers at this time. We're keeping a very tight ship for everybody's safety, just like everybody else. And Shelly is a rock star. Yes, she is. Really? You too. Ah, bah, bah, bah. <laughs> one little scream, one little. <laughs> they stop. Brothers will be brothers. Brothers will be brothers. Albert's, Albert's here. Albert's here. Albert needs a home. He's still with Foster at night and on weekends. Um, but he needs a forever home. You know, guys, we've done the videos over and over and over again. Repeatedly, you know, just keep going with the videos. Same old story. These dogs need homes to keep everybody, you know, up to date on what's a leaf, on what's, what's going on. These dogs that are still here. We are located in the Fort Lauderdale, Oakland Park area of Florida. And no, we do not ship or transport out of state. And I do respect the people that say, I really wish you could because I could offer a home and I appreciate it. But I will tell you right now, there's no way we're shipping or transporting any pet out of state. We need to physically go to the home and see the home to do a home check. We have had too many people fail us and tell us everything we want to hear. Um, and then after even local and then six months, a year, two years, three years, we need to return the dog. We need to bring the dog back. And over the nine years in this rescue, we've had people that literally will take the dog and just dump it at a shelter. And then we're picking up a dog from a kill shelter. Imagine that. So we are very strict. And the reason we're strict is because, not because we know it all, but because everything we have gone through as a rescue, we learn from everything and we do not repeat the same. That's the key in life with everything. No, Bradenton is not too far at all. You're exhausted watching these puppies. Can you imagine? They're nonstop. Little Energizer bunnies. We will not engage in negativity, negative comments. What I've realized are people will jump on. They'll say things such as, really, I don't want to look at this lady's face. I want to see dogs. Well, when I'm on doing... Us doing an update or a live video to update our supporters that are amazing by the way thank you um, you're gonna look at my face and if you don't want to look at my face and you'd rather look at my steering wheel or the roof of my car um, then just remove yourself uh, from our page we know what we're doing and our supporters know what we're doing and we will just be deleting and blocking people at that rate because we're not going to engage and get ourselves worked up and upset. It's not worth it. There's no time or energy for it. If you are out of state, good point. If you're out of state and you want to adopt, then go to your local shelter. Go to your local kill shelter. Reach out to local rescues in your area. A rescue, a life saved is a life saved, guys. It doesn't matter, of course, if you're close, we'd love you to choose us. If we don't have the dog that you're looking for, then please try another rescue or a kill shelter. 
it's all about saving a life, right? And do not purchase a dog, please. Anybody using a retractable leash, please toss them in the trash. We've seen so many mishaps. Make sure you use proper gear to walk your dogs. Too many dogs are getting out. Um, little harnesses dogs can slip out of. Normal, regular collars dogs slip out of. When they get spooked, they slip right over their heads. Invest yourself into a nice martingale collar. Just check it out on Amazon. We like, we like Max and Neo. Max and Neo martingale collars. Um, they're wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Um, good boy. Keith is fine, thank you. Yes, the Martingale collars are Max and Neo. They do a lot of donating give back. Um, when you buy a couple, they donate two to a rescue, which is great. And they're the best Martingale collars I've ever used, honestly. We've been using them for years. For years. Use a regular sturdy leash with your hand always through the loop when you're walking your dog. The puppies are no longer available. They're all spoken for. They just received their second run of vaccines. They've already been dewormed. They've already been microchipped. These are the three remaining of the six and the mom, Isis. Now Willow is adopted doing fantastic. We keep up to date with all of our adopters. <laughs> yes, I can't. That has to be heavy weight with water. Good job. Follow the leaders. We go ahead. We all do all doing up down to stare. Look at how good we <laughs> Oh my god, they're wonderful. <clears throat> so I think I've given you all the updates of every dog I could think of. If I've missed anything, sorry, it's early. If you're interested in adopting, please email us at 100 plus abandoned dogs at gmail.com and give us a little bit of a background of who you are, what you have, your work schedule, children ages, fenced yard. Not all dogs need fenced yards. Dogs that do not walk on leashes, that have never been socialized, they need fenced yards. But definitely, um, obviously, if you don't have a fenced yard, you're definitely going to never be having your dog outside off of a leash. These people that tell me, oh, well, I just let my dog outside to go to the bathroom real quick and then let him back in off leash. Absolutely unacceptable. We'll, we'll fail in a minute. Hot, hot second. Stop it. Stop. I, I got him. Mine. That's mine. You can't have him, Geb. Can't have him. Sorry. Gotta be nice. Gotta play nice. I've updated on the tick dogs. I've updated on every dog that we have. Just have to go back and watch the video when I shut down and you'll hear everything. Sen is amazing. Doing wonderful. We got the update from Daddy Carl. She's doing fantastic. <clears throat> Already updated on Mindy and Gage, so you'll hear that. They're doing well. The ticks are still falling off of them, if you can believe that. I think it was eight bowls of ticks. She did require a blood transfusion, but they are both doing well. Eating, drinking. They're all love, all kisses. Dr. Trow said they are nothing but love and so grateful and so good. So please consider opening your home. Please open your home and heart to a rescue in need. We have so many wonderful dogs. Not all of our dogs are tough cases. We have a lot of easy, wonderful dogs. Consider it. We have Gable and Binky that are left behind from the hoarding. And Binky's not ready. Binky is only attached to Keith. He's a tough one, guys, a real tough one. Like Hugo. Hugo has been in his new home for six weeks and uh, not coming around at all. So I'll update more on um, Hugo tomorrow. And Gage and Godiva are doing phenomenal. Um, their, their, their foster daddy, Dan, just moved to the beach <laughs> in Fort Lauderdale. So Pam has been spending a lot of time with them. Lots of walks on the beach. They're living the dream. Living the dream. Disco got adopted. She has her very own Facebook page. Where have you been? Yes, it, I got my car cleaned three hours later, 140 something dollars to have the ticks taken out of my car. There's nothing worse than a car full of ticks. It's a nightmare. Binky is just so broken. Waiting on all the results um, of the blood work from Gage and Mindy. I should hopefully have an answer today. 
So guys, with that all being said, good morning, happy Friday. We will have another update this afternoon. So stay with me. I'll be back soon. 100 plus abandoned dogs of Everglades, Florida.